What is that in the box? <laughs> Investing in quality running gear can often improve your performance as well as increase your enjoyment out on runs. But can you buy quality kit without breaking the bank? And is there a difference between the running brands that we know and love and their third party counterparts from online retailers. Well, before we find out, don't forget to subscribe to The Running Channel and click the bell icon to be the first to watch our brand new videos all about running every week. It's important to mention that we're not paid by the brands to say nice things and all of the opinions that you're about to hear are my own. Now, most of us are familiar with Amazon and eBay, two of the world's largest e-commerce platforms that are used by millions of buyers and retailers on a daily basis. However, there are alternatives to these, such as AliExpress, Wish and DHgate, that offer similar products at a lower price, but usually without the same buyer guarantee or reputation as one of the larger platforms. Put simply, quite often get what you pay for. Now, I've got a couple of different items ordered from Wish. Shoes, headphones, a jacket, heart rate monitor, a running backpack, and a smartwatch, as well as the equivalent pieces of kit from well-known brands. So, let's put this gear to the test. Okay, so I guess this class is as an unboxing. It's not exactly as glamorous as some of the ones that you see the filtered Instagram influencers doing, because I've literally got a carrier bag. So, first up, shoes. Okay. Um, you know, normally when you get a pair of running shoes, they're in a pretty fancy box. Um, they've got some nice packaging. These are definitely not the ones I ordered. So these were £15 and the ones on the website were basically, they, they looked very much like Nikes. They even had the swoosh on them. First impressions, they look tiny actually. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to fit these on my feet. This one, description of contents, earphone. So these ones on the website look like the bone conducting Aftershocks headphones. So let's see what have been sent. Yeah, very much so. Looking like some bone conducting headphones. Charge time, one and a half hours. Working time, five hours. Standby time, 120 hours. So let's get into this. By the way, there is a lot of plastic in this. Um, lots of the bigger name brands are moving to a, a much more environmentally friendly um, packaging system. So marks down on these for the old packaging. Here we go. This is what they look like out of the box. So the next package, this says description of contents, smart watch. Not very fancy. What have we got here then? Oh, okay. So, this looks very much like the Garmin venue that we're going to be putting it up against. Um, what is that in the box? <laughs> that is the battery for the watch. <laughs> That's amazing. It is a rechargeable battery, so it's got a little charging port. Oh, I do like the jingle. Oh look, there we go. We're good to go. Um, interestingly as well to note, there's no heart rate monitor on the back, but that is because we have got a separate one for that. So let's move on to the next item. There we go. Bluetooth wireless heart rate chest strap. Battery cover, electrode areas, heart rate monitor sensor. This one's been a little bit bashed. So let's take it out of the box. Here it is. I've got a an instructions manual, so it'll be interesting to see how easy that is to pair up. £14 for a heart rate monitor. Is it worth it though? What's next? Description of contents. Coat. Okay. Uh, interestingly, that's definitely not the colour that I ordered. <laughs> Handy little bag that it comes in though. Here we go. This is 
the running jacket. It's got pockets with no zips in, um, which isn't great when you're running along because you don't want your stuff to fall out, but be interesting to put this one to the bin bag test, i.e. does it make you feel like you're wearing a bin bag when it's warm but you want protecting from the rain? We shall see. Last one. Description of contents. Bag 001, bladder, sky blue. Oh, quite pleasantly surprised by this. Although, I may have spoken too soon. This could, on first impressions, having not even put it on, be a pretty decent commuter running pack though. And in the inside, we've got a bladder as well. So a hydration pack with um, oodles of storage. Pleasantly surprised by that one. Okay, so we've got a bit of a mixed bag here. And in order to fairly put this stuff to the test, I'm going to be running the same route wearing this gear as I am wearing its more well-known branded counterparts to see whether you really do get what you pay for or whether there are some savings to be made on this slightly wacky versions of things. The smartwatch is, um, that's gonna be an interesting one for sure. Menu, Bluetooth, search new device. Oh, Anna's iPhone, pair, pairing, there we go, so it's called A1, A1 is paired, let's click this, connected. That's a very posh English voice as well. Okay, let's see if my Spotify will play through my phone. Yes! That's very loud. Okay. Let's see what they're like out on a run, but first impressions, Little bit tinny. Heart rate monitor, add device, searching. No sensors found. It's still searching and can't find it, so I think that's a big fat <coughs> for the heart rate monitor because if I can't connect it to anything, I'm not gonna get any readings from it. So, onwards. Okay. <laughs> oh, dear. So, as expected, and what was quite obvious when I got these out of the bag is that, my feet are actually bigger than the shoes. Now, what I think might have happened here is I've ordered a size six and a half, and I think what I've got is a US size six and a half, which I think in UK sizes, oh, that must be about a size four. I mean, ow, yeah. It's gonna have to be another one that sits out of the run, so another wish.com right then let's get this on uh, menu mm. 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 Doesn't, doesn't like the wet okay Really doesn't like the wet. Okay. 
Okay, ready, steady, go. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna need to turn my headphones on because the sloshing. <laughs> wow, that is um, that's quite annoying. A uh, little rainy run, although the sun's coming out, so we'll be able to put the bin bag to test. This sloshing is so distracting. Oh my god. Okay, so to overcome the sloshing noise, I've got my headphones on. And they're actually alright. <laughs> I can still hear the sloshing though. So, so far, it's a big fat note to the shoes, a big fat note to the heart rate monitor. Still no water coming out of here. Oh, hang on, there's a twist to open. There's still no water. Okay, the sloshing is so loud that people are actually looking at me when I run past. Green isn't showing anything on my watch. That worries me slightly. Okay, is there anything worse than getting back from a run and realizing that it hasn't recorded on your watch? I think not. So here is the moment of truth. What does my watch say? Okay, it's interesting. That is interesting. Um, not only has it underestimated the amount of time I've been out, it also just adds some random step number in. Uh, and then, can you see all of those? Heat. I don't think that's actually as hot as it is. Because I am sweating in this bin bag. So let me just run you through what I am going to be comparing it to. So I've got the Innovate Storm Shell jacket on, I've got a Camelback pack, the Aftershocks Aero packs, a Garmin Venue Square, and then on my feet, I've got the Nike Tempo Next Percent. And then underneath all of this, I have the Garmin HRM Pro heart rate monitor, which I need to connect up to the watch before I go and run. Let's go test this out. So the moment of truth, my verdict on the knockoff products from Wish.com versus the products that we know and love from well-known brands. So let's start with the shoes. Well, there's not really a lot that I can do to compare the two because the Wish ones were too small for my feet. I couldn't run in them. One thing that I would say is just even from feeling them though and putting them on my feet, although they were too small, I know that there are better shoes out there for a lower price than the fancy branded ones. For example, we looked at the £10 shoes from Decathlon and they do a much better job than I envisage these could. They're just so hard and just really not supportive. So that's my view on the shoes. Um, another one that gets a big fat cross mm. is the heart rate monitor. Um, so the one that we ordered, who knows? how you can connect that up, but I had no luck, and versus the Garmin HRM Pro, I mean, there's just no comparison, really. Headphones, 
pleasantly surprised by the headphones. So the Wish.com ones versus the Aftershocks Aeropacks. So again, you definitely get what you pay for, but as I mentioned, the sound quality isn't that bad in these ones. Now, the Aeropacks do last longer in the charge. The quality of the music and the audio that's coming through is much better than these. However, when you look at the price, if you don't have the cash available, for the Aftershocks ones, then these are a good alternative. Next up, we have the jackets. There's no zips in the pockets. <laughs> we have a big thing about there being no zips in the pockets. Um, it's just, I mean, common sense. When you're going out running, you need something that's gonna be able to keep your stuff in the pockets, not fall out. So again, I mean, it was fine as a, a pack a mac a kind of thing that you might wear like at a festival or something, but as a performance piece of kit, I'm afraid that's a no from me. Uh, you know, when you compare it to the likes of the Innovate Storm Shell jacket, you've got the adjustable head bit around the hood, you've got the peak on the, on the hood as well to keep the rain out of your face. And although I was quite warm in it on the actual run that I did, this jacket definitely performs at a much higher level than the Wish one. Running packs, the Wish one. Now, word of warning, you might not be able to get the water out of the actual tube, but it does come out of the actual bladder. So yeah, this is actually wet everywhere and I'm not really too sure what I've done. Um, the pack as a whole, it was, it was comfortable to wear. The sloshing on the other hand, wow. That was another level. But as a commuter backpack, if you haven't got very much stuff to take in with you, you know, it has got a fair bit of room in it and some zip pockets that are really useful. Um, it doesn't fit, you know, big stuff in, so you wouldn't be able to take a laptop or anything. But on the whole, as an actual pack to carry stuff in while you're running, I really rated it. The bladder side of things, absolute disaster. It's soaking wet and I didn't get any water out of it. And finally, the big one. Can you buy a smartwatch for running for £12? Well, yes, you can buy a smartwatch for running for £12. We did. Does it perform to the same level as a brand that we know and love, Garmin, in this instance? Nowhere near. Doesn't even come close. So I've paired it to my phone. I'm not really too sure, I'm not convinced that it actually does anything paired to my phone. Um, when you go running and measure an activity on this, it tells you the number of steps that you did. It also gives you random um, measurements of fat, heat, speed, and mileage, um, but there is no GPS. And I also have concerns that the battery is just there. Uh, and removable. I didn't actually even know if it was recording for half of the time um, and on return from my run it would appear it wasn't. So um, yeah, I, yes you can buy a smartwatch for running for £12 but you can't get one that will perform to a level uh, of its more pricey counterparts. So Hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into some of the stuff that's out there, where you can make a bit of a saving and where you're just wasting your money even if it is cheap. Have you ever got yourself a running bargain that paid off? Or maybe you've also bought something that was too good to be true and you've been bitten in the backside by it. Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time on The Running Channel.